Jim. Get dressed. Get dressed. Get dressed. Ben, how are you? Do I call you? What is it? A poncho. I don't know what you thought. I know what summit, we agreed to a uh, common strategy that was aimed at ensuring continued economic growth and job creation, and much of that was based on the pattern of what we have been doing here, the volunteering on their part, that they've got to do more to encourage entrepreneurship, uh, talk of following our path and reducing taxes and so forth, and instead of them being so terribly concerned about our budget deficits, as, uh, as we've been, been made to believe, we're concerned about them, rightly so, but, and Don, correct me if I'm wrong on this, I believe that the, um, or Jim, I believe that percentage of gross national product, uh, as a percentage of gross national product, ours is lower than the average of the European countries. Yes, so the average is 3.9 percent and ours is 3.4. So they've got, a, they've got a job to do, too, and they recognize it. They're the main issue upon which there's a difference uh, had to do with our plea for a meeting, another round of trade talks. At Williamsburg, two years ago, we asked for that. No date was set, but everybody was supposed to be exploring and so forth the meetings, the need for this. Now, two years have gone by with us saying, Yes, everyone agreeing or almost everyone we have such a meeting. And this time, everyone was unanimous against protectionism and was great concern about the threat of protectionism from our own country here. Now, as I say, this was unanimous. When it came to setting the date, there was one holdout for the president of France. And uh, I don't know whether it's just coincidence or not, but all we asked for and they say we were defeated, did not get a specific date. We never asked for a specific date. All we ever said was, in 1986, and preferably in early 1986, we should have such a round of talks. France objected because in 1986, they're also having an election. And uh, there was some concern about, about this. But the result was, the other six of the seven, all of us were agreed so was the president of the European community. He said we should do this. So what we're going to do, uh, as a matter of fact, <coughs> here in 1985, it is agreed that we're going to have at the ministerial level some uh, preparatory talks, getting together agenda and so forth. And uh, even if France is, is not a part of it, uh, we can be assured that we even 
one of our trading partners are going to have a, such a, a meeting. I uh, our partners endorsed uh, our efforts in Geneva. Uh, all of them supported our SDI research program. Uh, one country indicated they didn't wish to participate in research, and that again was France. But the others uh, are all very interested in there are phases of the research that they can do, and sort of like a, uh, subcontracts and so forth. They get very interested. Uh, I told how successful Nancy's meeting at the first meeting, uh, her meeting with the 17 uh, the first ladies of other countries had been. <laughs> I think you have to start by saying that this is the decisive breakthrough on the budget that we've been looking for for the last couple of years. The fact is, we've been in a stalemate with the Congress here, 300 over three years, that didn't have any big tax increase in it. And we labored mightily against that for a forecast on the Hill, and I think that we've proven, proven them wrong decisively. And I believe now the momentum is will set the example, we've laid down the marker, and I think we've created an expectation in which the effects and disappointments in this pack. And so I would like to remind everybody with the remind everybody of the four goals that we started with, that I've got up on the top of the paper here, how we did in terms of achieving those goals and why we didn't do better on one the Senate Council package. There's no tax increases, no tax measures, and that's the production plan this had to be spending reduction. And uh, it's obvious that that goal is full. Secondly, we set a minimum of $50 billion in 1986, which would hold the budget plans to be passed. Third thing we said was that this can't just be a one year hold down of the budget. Our problem is that we've got structural overspending built into the budget.
chosen? Uh, you know, Just out of curiosity. And I believe March in a letter to the incorporators signed by Ronald W. Reagan, the President of the United States. But they, they were discussed with the President in December, I think. Yes. When you and Martin. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure we discussed officers then, but we certainly discussed this. I didn't know so. <laughs> that eagle used to be there where that thing is now until just a half an hour or so ago. Jim and I traded because it seems that the photographers have been suffering in silence. And finally, they dug out a couple of examples of why. I don't know what may be it happened to you, all, but with that eagle behind that chair, these gentlemen and the French gentlemen we're getting like once I was wearing the eagle like a hat. <laughs> and then we had we had the head of state from one of the African countries here, and there's not the eagle showing that looked like he had feathers in his hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, they suffered in silence too long, Mr. Huh? They suffered in silence too long. <laughs> can I tell before we get talk business? Can I tell Dickinson about when the president was here and Andriotti? of Italy was here. And the ambassador was here, George Schultz was there, and I was there. And we looked over and Andriotti's fly was wide open. Just as, so I looked at Schultz and I said, Jesus, fly. And so he signals to the to the French to the Italian ambassador. The president was talking away like this. <laughs> the Italian ambassador tried to get his attention. And the press were all of them were about to come in or I forget what the situation was. So Schultz got up, walked across like this, got Andriotti, and he says, excuse me, like this. Andriotti gets up and he's looking at this, and he's going, fly though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful picture. <laughs> Standing totally. <laughs> you, you would expect that sort of diplomacy from the secretary. <laughs> Finally, the guy in Italian said, you're wonderful. <laughs> 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 I understand my wife and your wife and Kat's wife having lunch today. Oh, God. That's right, she has your first lunch. Yes. Yeah, my wife's president of the club, and she yeah. introduced your wife, and, yeah. uh, and you was too. That's right. She was in here in a meeting a little earlier yeah. with regard to the presidential library and yes. had to excuse herself. I didn't, well, well, I can't tell you how pleased I'll be when it's over. <laughs> but my wife is <laughs> nervous. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do appreciate the opportunity of meeting with you because I've got a problem that we need to discuss. Right. We've discussed a couple of problems there before, and we resolved them. 